Hi, my name is Gary Patterson, and welcome to this six-week journey through Lent, Longing for Home, which is also the title of our United Church book of daily reflections for Lent. There will be week-by-week -week video presentations by yours truly, ongoing conversations on Facebook, an opportunity to connect with others in your congregation, your community, sharing questions, insights, even a meal. So many different ways to share this journey together. Longing for home. Maybe the only way to find our true home is to leave where we are presently staying. Like Abraham and Sarah, perhaps, and so many others in the great cloud of witnesses who set out on a journey of exploration to find their true home, not knowing exactly where they were going, but trusting that God would lead them. Perhaps, as the poet T.S. Eliot suggests, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. We are being invited to journey with Jesus, who left Nazareth, left family, routine, security, and set off to find John the Baptist, the voice crying out in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance. I often wonder what triggered Jesus' decision, and further, what starts any of us on such a journey? Does it come from a restlessness of spirit, wondering, is this all there is? Is it an inner sense of, now is the time? Or perhaps it's a crisis, loss and pain, even statistics of decline that force us into new directions. Or maybe it's good news that triggers the journey, a vision of different possibilities, a dream of life abundant. Maybe this Lenten journey is an opportunity for each one of us, and maybe also for our church, to leave whatever Nazareth we find ourselves in. Not that it's necessarily a bad place, just that we are being called by God to something different. And now is the moment. So Jesus leaves home, and the next thing that happens is baptism, with its double focus. First, a washing clean, a repentance, a letting go, which is not a bad way to start off, eh? a moment when we are broken open into deep and honest self-recognition and turn from past ways in the hope of beginning something new. And then, the gift of renewal of energy, a power beyond ourselves that will enable us to live into that change. At Jesus' baptism, the spirit dove descends on Jesus and a voice declares, You are my beloved. There is such a gift in those words, such power to know and to feel oneself to be beloved. I wonder if perhaps the deepest definition of home is not so much a building, a place. Rather, it's the experience of being accepted and loved and knowing that you belong. Maybe our truest home is in God. But then watch what happens. Immediately after his baptism, Jesus is driven by the Spirit into the wilderness, which makes sense, no? Change is always risky, costly, and the tough times of struggle are, in a strange way, a gift from God. Not that I'm crying out for a journey through the wilderness, but when I'm honest, I know such times have changed my life and, well, the life of our church. So let's not kid ourselves. This Lenten journey, this longing for home, it, it won't be easy. There will be times of serious tempting, real temptations, not least of which might be to turn back to whatever secure and homey Nazareth we have left. Now, unlike Matthew and Luke, Mark does not spell out the temptations that Jesus faced, which I like, actually, since it opens up space for each of us to wrestle with our own demons, our own temptations. What will turn any of us away from this call to follow? Fear? Apathy? Hopelessness? Lack of vision? Too comfortable in our old ways? There are always choices, no? Perhaps this Lenten journey might become an opportunity to look more carefully at the choices we have made and to make new decisions. Despite Mark's brevity, you catch a sense of the intensity of Jesus' struggle. Satan versus the Spirit, beasts versus angels. But you also see how it turns out and how Jesus leaves the wilderness in order to present each one of us with a choice. The kingdom of God is at hand repent and believe in the good news.